calibration has been completed in the last video and with that I will be putting the chart back in the unit and closing this thing back up let's get started do some real world applications here I've also cleaned up this piece of plastic before I do the installation this is the protective cover for the test chart the chart is now back in place I'll now put it back in the box So I just want to talk about a couple things before I get started doing any testing. And, and this is stuff that you, you kind of learn as you go through repairing the unit and doing the calibration. Interesting note, when I got to the bottom of the uh, the article on the web page, uh, the author of the web page had, had actually also come to these conclusions as well. And this is, this is basically the thing. This is obviously a, a consumer grade unit. And for pass fail, does an incredible job. But the thing is this, as I look at this, I was saying to myself, it just came right short of the finish line for what could have been a lot more uh, precise handling of uh, getting the actual value of the micro mos for the vacuum tubes. And and this is the problem, right? Uh, the The shunt control, which is dialed in for a specific number as indicated here to get the pass fail is, is perfectly fine, right? So if it says for the 12 AX7, 58, and, and you get it on that 58, you're good. It's gonna fall into that good area and you don't really care about the value as long as it's an approximation. The thing is when you're actually measuring the uh, mutual conductance and they want you to get it on, on that 3000, assuming that this thing were perfectly calibrated, Nobody's ever going to get that thing right on on that 3000 there with what they should have done for this unit is for measuring the mutual conductance is a separate uh, function switch that moved away from shunt and went from the 3000 6000 and 15000 position and didn't use this knob to set those values and that would have been a lot more accurate. It could have been separately calibrated away from the shunt control and, and would have been a lot more repeatable between tubes, but they didn't do that. So if you're off by a little bit, it's gonna move that needle around and it's just not a good design. They should not have done that. The other problem is the bias is measured from zero to 100 on this dial, which again is fine for pass fail. The, that itself is not a problem. You could have the bias measured from zero to 100. The problem is, is there's no meter to tell you what the bias voltage is. And what they should have done is given you a value of what to set the bias to and then have a value of what the voltage should be. That way you could know what the actual bias is for the tube. This is kind of a shot in the dark. There are other things within this unit that would that would change those values that you can't control, but those two things would have definitely gotten this close enough to be a contender. Wouldn't have gotten you down to five micromos, like a laboratory grade piece of equipment, but it would have gotten you definitely in the ballpark. That's my thoughts on that. And I'll point out, as I do in each one of these videos, that there is a shadow, and the shadow shows up in the meter, not the needle. So it always looks like it's off by, by one graticule. This is the tube that was used in the very first video. And this one impressed me, because this is the first one that I used in testing after I had uh, restored the unit. Why it impressed me was because the expected amount of micromos that comes back on the micromo test is 1250 on the triode. Uh, you can see it in the video, but take my word for it, 1250. And when I hit the test button, this thing came back with exactly 1250. Unbelievable. And I was like, I was like, that's amazing. But I'll, I'll tell you right now that this tube, as shown in the original video and in the uh, in this video now, uh, has a higher emission on the second triode than the first. The second one does not come back as 1250. Begs the question. Is the second one 1250 and the tester reads low? You know, nobody knows. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure my line test is set here. Here's the question. Given given the fact that I could hit this button, and I'll tell you right now that it that it's showing 1250, how much can I be off on the shunt? How much will it have an effect if I move it slightly? So here's the test. I actually can use the top dashes for reference, and I want to get it. I'm on right on 3000. 
So it's just after the dash, and I'm just going to move it to the edge of each side. And there's the edge. It's almost as if the meter moves the same distance as it's off by on the shunt. That is to say, the thickness of the dash is the same thickness that it moves on, on the meter, is, is what I'm seeing. Now I've set the test up just like before, right? And the bias is at 12 for the uh, for the tube as it's supposed to be set up for 12 x 7 Now watch what happens if I just touch the bias to bring it instead of from the center lined up to just the end, just a little, right? That, that was a, a lot more, right? I haven't even gotten to the end yet. The bias has a profound effect, right? Maybe Maybe two to three times as much of movement, right? When I said that the movement of the uh, shunt is pretty much for the size of the dashes is what I'm seeing moved on here. The thickness of the dash is, is how much I'm seeing the needle deflect. The bias is, is moving three to four times as much on here. So if I had a choice of, of like an upgrade on this unit of having the, the shunt have a, a like a, a gauge here where I could choose to shut this off and use fixed positions for 3,000, 6,000, and 15,000, or have a, a, a meter where the bias would tell me exactly what the spe specified bias voltage was to make sure the bias was absolutely correct, hands down, I would choose the bias because that one seems to have much more uh, profound effect on accuracy on this unit than the shunt does. Also, I'm not sure if this is an entirely correct way of thinking. However, that if it was believed that a tube would perfectly match the reading of the uh, mutual conductance, in the case of this tube we've managed to do, then we would expect uh, that if we were to get 1250 here, if we were to shunt it as specified, in this case 58, and, and get it right on the money, I normally wouldn't care then we would know where this test set would expect to put the needle for a really good tube on a pass-fail. And we could see that it takes us around this uh, 2000 mark. So I, just, I was just curious, where, where is 100% uh, as far as pass-fail should a tube match exactly what it would expect for this transconductance or, or mutual conductance as it were? Question answered. And we already know that side was 1250. Just for completeness, I'm going to check the other side. I've adjusted nothing else but the bottom switches. And as I had mentioned, this side is just a bit higher at 1300. So, yeah, it's close. Next up is an EL34. Uh, I have uh, several of these out of the uh, ST70. These are low hour tubes. That should be uh, nice to test on here. This comes out of the European book as it is not in the uh, data sheet down here. We could see uh, quite a bit of deflection here from the uh, current draw as this thing turned up. So I'm gonna readjust the line for this. Again, we see a tube that tests good, right? And it is stopping at around the 2000 mark. I see from the paper that we should see a value of 6,000. Interesting, 6,000 is just at the cutoff uh, for the other value. So I'm gonna have to use a 6,000 value on the shunt. That should be a uh, full scale. So let me make sure that the line test is good. 5,100. Actually, stand by. My line test is low. So due to my air conditioner cycling, the uh, uh, voltage had changed. What I'm actually seeing is 5,400. So that is a uh, much closer value to 6,000. These things pull a lot of current. I could see the, uh, the fuse light illuminate a little bit when these are plugged in, especially when I'm, when I'm hitting the test button. You see that one drop it in the other direction when it went in. This one looks like 5600. Like I said, can't tell you the exact value, but I can tell you it's not far off from the other one. Within 100. Watch watch the line test here. You see how it's uh, it's about two dashes above. 
We'll watch it drop two dashes down and then settle back into position as a current draw, as the, as the f filament heats up. It should find zero. It's like five, five. And this one's five, six. So right off the bat, I learned in looking at this for my EL34s in that ST70 that it would be better served to move this back left tube over to this side as this would be a much better match over here and this would be a much better match over here for this push-pull configuration. This would not have been revealed on the Century tube tester. I'm trying to diode now. There's a, a GZ34. That is a lot of current pull. Did you see that? So it shot up about uh, 0.1 amps. You see it's coming back down. I'm looking at the ammeter. It'll let this tube come to temperature. This is different than other tubes because this is going to be a pass-fail only. There's not going to be any mutual conductance measurements done on this particular one. The current seems to have stabilized. Adjust my line voltage. So this test is going to measure individually both sides of this rectifier. So we can do one at a time. So I'm going to test. Clearly it's good. And we can see that the value here is at, uh, looks like 2550, just as a reference. That's all I'm saying. This has no actual numeric value. So I have made the slight change from six to four over here, and that allows us to test the other plate. So I'll hit the test button. And we can see 2600. So yeah, this uh, rectifier is uh, good. Has good emission on both plates. It's very close, but it is not identical, right? It's off ever so slightly. I figured I might as well just finish off the testing of the tubes in this ST70 by uh, testing this 6GH8 uh, phase inverter. So I'm just gonna pop it in here and, and have a go at it. We'll see what happens. This is the uh, um, first section I'm doing is the pentoed section. It's more of a more complicated tube than, than other ones that I've tested. I'll let this warm up adequately. And I am looking at the short light, by the way. I know you can't tell from the camera, but I do check that. These smaller tubes, they, they, they hardly have an impact as far as uh, as I monitor the um, the current draw. I have an, I have an inline ammeter. We're expecting uh, 3,000. Looks like it was just about to stop full scale. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do for the purpose of this video, I'm going to dial it back a little and see if, see if it was just about to stop there because it looked like it just went over. So what we're looking at here, based on what I found, I'm putting it at one dash past, right? I'm not going to put it at two dashes past based on what I've already learned already. Yeah, and wow, yeah, that, that really actually works. So it's two dashes past. That's... One dash past is, yeah, so it's about one dash over the 3,000. So, that's, so this tube is actually reading, based on, on what I have discovered earlier, to be 3,050 based on that test. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Let's, let's do the other side. So I've got everything set up for the next test, right? And this is the other section. This is the triode section. So I've adjusted everything accordingly. And because we're expecting 3,900, it puts us in the next range, right? And that's the 6,000 setting on the shunt. So we're on a second scale now, right? And what we're expecting is 3,900. So let's hit the button and see what we got, right? So let's see. So we're at 3,000, 4,000. It's two, four, six. 3,700, right? So it's not far off for 3,900, only off by 200. And again, with this with this bias, like I'll just touch it so you could see, just I'll just just touch the hair. Like if if it was at 20 and a half, and not even, right? If it was 20 and a half instead of 21, it would have showed 3,900. So that shows you how how twitchy the bias can be, right? So these. These numbers are very close to the to the values of the tubes. I'm very impressed. 
So here's something cool. I couldn't test this on the Sentry. It doesn't support this tube or, or it's unknown to me, this style. And generally Magic Eye Tubes on the Sentry, as I understand it, you can't actually see the function. You can only uh, test uh, for uh, the emissions within the tube itself, right? On this one, you can actually test it and open and close the eye, which is pretty cool. I'll, I'll show this function now. So this test is unique in that it does not use the meter at all. The, I, the meter deflects, but it's, there's no reading to be uh, gained by it. The uh, uh, output is actually on the tube itself, right? So this is kind of rare for a tube like this. So I'm gonna hit test and we could see that the tube works. This is in the open condition. Let me see if I can move the camera closer. So there's the open condition for the tube when I hit the test button. And then I make a slight adjustment. I change the screen from zero to two and I hit the test button again. And that's the closed condition for the tube. So the evaluation is done based on the quality of the tube itself, right? If it looks good, there's closed, there's open. So yeah, very interesting that you could evaluate magic eye tubes like that on this unit. Here's a 25Z6 from the ACDC radio days of Transformalist design. And I'm just gonna set this up here and go through this one quick. This one showing about 2450 on the good bad scale. This is a uh, rectifier, so there's no uh, actual measurement. So we're using this as a reference. Now move to the other one. Now looking at the other side, you can see 2400. Okay, this will go in the garbage. I am definitely not disappointed uh, by the calibration of this unit and the, the design, even with the shortcomings. This again, I reiterate, if if they had built this up just a little bit more, this would have been a formidable test set. You know, unfortunately, that didn't happen, but still, I'm very happy. With, with what it's able to do. I think this concludes the demonstration functionality and limitations of this test set. I think I, I was pretty thorough in a lot of what can be done with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think this also concludes the uh, series on the restoration of this unit. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.